Hello family, we thank God for today. Today is Friday, remember the song that used to say, thank God it's Friday, thank God it's Friday. Today I'm going back to reading from Genesis chapter 17 and I will read from verse 9 to the very end. Genesis chapter 17 reading from verse 9. It says, Further God said to Abraham, As for you, your part of the agreement, you shall keep and faithfully obey the terms of my covenant, you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. This is the sign of my covenant, which you shall keep and faithfully obey, between me and you and your descendants after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised, and you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins, and it shall be the sign, symbol, memorial of the covenant between me and you. Every male among you who is eight days old shall be circumcised throughout your generations, including a servant, whether born in the house or one who is purchased with your money from any foreigner who is not one of your descendants, a servant who is born in your house or one who is purchased with your money must be circumcised, and the sign of my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his false king, that person shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. Then God said to Abraham, As for Sarai your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, my princess, but her name will be Sarah princess i will bless her and indeed i will also give you a son by her yes i will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations kings of peoples will come from her then abraham fell in his face and laughed and said in his heart shall a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old and shall sarah who is ninety ninety years old bear a child and abraham said to god all oh, that ishmael my firstborn might live before you but God said, No, Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son indeed, and you shall name him Isaac, laughter, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his descendants after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard and listened to you. Behold, I will bless him and will make him fruitful and will greatly multiply him through his descendants. He will be the father of twelve princes, chieftains, sheikhs, and I will make him a great nation." But my covenant, my promise, my solemn pledge, I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you at this time next year. And God finished speaking with him and went up from Abraham. Then Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all the servants who were born in his house and all who were purchased with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's household and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin the very same day. I want you to pay, please um, pay attention to that, as God had said to him. So Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised, and Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised. On the very same day Abraham was circumcised, as well as Ishmael, his son, all the men, servants of his household, both those born in the house and those purchased with money from a foreigner, were circumcised along with him as the sign of of God's covenant with Abraham. Today I want to share with you that people of faith are quick to obey the word of the Lord. This is Abraham. The account of what he does after God had visited him, God had appeared to him, had said to him he would make a covenant with him and with his descendants after him. And then God says to him that the condition that I want you to meet, as far as my promise of making a covenant with you is concerned, is that you are to circumcise yourself in every male in your household, whether they are family related, slaves, whatever, they are to be circumcised. And the Bible makes us understand but at the time that Abraham was saying, having this interaction with God, he was 99 years old. He wasn't a young man at all. And um, obviously we have read it in past um, previous weeks. I had talked about how Abraham had gone to war 
um, to rescue his son Lot. And the Bible makes us understand that he had at least 300 train, trained men amongst his, um, his staff, or if you like, yeah. And so if you consider the fact that there were at least 300 trained men that had gone to war, it suggests to me that there were more than 300 male that he needed to ensure. He would, one, convince, persuade, you name it, for them to actually agree to the fact that he was going to say to them that God, his God, had said that he wanted to get into covenant with him and so they were to circumcise themselves. Now, for I come from a background where circumcision is practiced and I know that even for babies at the age of um, eight days old, they still go through pain. But I do know that those when you're older, certainly the pain that older people endure when they are circumcised is nothing compared to what children go through. But this man, the Bible says, that when God spoke to him and said to him, one, he was supposed to do something that nobody up until that time, no male was being circumcised. So it was something that was new. He did not even hesitate. He did not even think, okay, could it be that, you know, maybe I could actually go to God and, and just persuade him or convince him to accept something else from me or whatever it is. The Bible says that on the very same day that God spoke to Abraham, he himself, led by example, offering himself to be circumcised, his son Ishmael, who was a 13-year-old boy, offered himself to be circumcised. And then all the men, he ensured that every single one of them, according to the word of the Lord, were circumcised that day. As I've already shared, and for those of you who come from a background where circumcision is practiced, you can imagine the pain they would have gone through. Just imagine the day that you've had a cut on your finger. For example, and maybe you felt that it was a bit of a deep cut, the pain that you would have gone through. And so these men would have had to stay for them to have their foreskin removed with some sharp knife, whatever it is. I would leave the rest to your imagination. But in your imagination, I want you to focus on the pain that they would have endured. The fact that they would have had to stay indoors and refrained from work and so on for so many days. One of the things that Abraham could have thought to himself was, what if, because we, when we practice or do what God is asking us to do, what if an enemy comes up against us? What if the neighboring towns or people who have been waiting to maybe come up against us here, that we're no longer fit and that we are in a weak state because we cannot actually go to war. What if they decide that they're going to pounce on us during this time where we're vulnerable because we're healing from whatever pain or um, the procedure of the circumcision? He could have had a lot of things to, um, to actually stop him from doing what God has said to him to do. But Abraham, this man of faith, so trusted God that he knew without a shadow of a doubt that, yes, he would go through pain. Yes, he would have to find a way to persuade his people. I don't know how he came about um, being able to convince them. But the fact still remains that he did not let all the ifs and the buts stop him from doing what God wants him to do. And as I think of this, I just really want to encourage all of us that even as we keep hearing the word of the Lord um, the past few days, we've talked about the covenant, how we have a better covenant with Christ um, through Christ Jesus, how there's power in the Holy Communion. God keeps speaking to us day after day through this podcast, through sermons we're hearing in, uh, from our churches, through conversations that we're having with other believers, through other messages that we may be getting through other mediums. It is really important that we always pay attention to what God is saying to us through those mediums. And most importantly, also paying attention to what God is instructing you to do in your secret place.
Because what God may ask you to do in your secret place, he may not be asking me to do it. He may not be asking somebody else to do it. He may not be asking somebody that you look up to, even maybe in Christendom, maybe somebody who's a leader. So, you know, when you hear and you know and you know that God has spoken to you, what the Bible is saying is that be quick to obey. Do not start rationalizing. Do not start thinking, let me go and check that with this or that. Has God actually asked somebody to do this or that? Because there are times when God would speak to you and will ask you to do something he's never asked anybody to do. So if you're waiting for somebody to verify whether it is God, in some cases, you may actually miss the timing of God. And I think of a scripture, even in... um. Exodus chapter 19 verse 5 where it says now therefore if you will in fact obey my voice and keep my covenant agreement then you shall be my own special possession and treasure from among all peoples of the world for all the earth is mine. It is therefore no wonder that God decided to honor Abraham to fulfill the covenants that he had made with Abraham. And even to this day, the nations and many people are being blessed because of the fact that Abraham obeyed the Lord. He did not question whatever the Lord God told him to do. Abraham was quick to obey. I also think of a scripture in Psalm 119 verse 60. It says this, I hurried and did not delay to keep your commands, commandments. So today, let us remember, if we want to be those people who are in covenant relationship, those people that God chooses, he said to himself in the scripture I read in Exodus, that yes, the earth is yours, his, the nations and the people of, of the earth belong to him, but he has the special, those people who are quick to obey him, to do their part as far as the covenant agreement is concerned, he treasures them think for a moment would you not want God to say that he treasures you so that if ever there was hell was breaking loose and there was chaos all over the place you're the one that God will be like you know as for this child of mine he's so dear to my heart and this is therefore no wonder that the Bible says to us that God described Abraham not as a son not as a servant not as a slave but as a friend. And God is saying to you and I, that if we're quick to obey him, he will treasure us. And all will know that we are indeed a people that are treasured of the Lord. In closing, today we're going to start looking at a new memory um, verse, which is Romans chapter 10, verse 10. It says, for with a heart a person believes in Christ as Savior, resulting in his justification, that is, being made righteous, being freed of the guilt of sin and made acceptable to God. And with the mouth he acknowledges and confesses his faith openly, resulting in and confirming his salvation. So let us remember from this scripture, what it is saying is that sometimes it is good to say that I believe or I have faith. But it is equally important that we sometimes remember that what we profess with our mouth will determine whether we see the results of faith. Because the person who believes in his heart that Jesus is Lord, it is of necessity that he must open his mouth and make that confession because of what the scripture is saying to us in Romans chapter 10 verse 10, that with, for with a heart a person believes resulting in his justification, that is being made righteous, being freed of the guilt of sin and made acceptable to God. And with the mouth he acknowledges and confesses his faith openly, resulting in and confirming his salvation. So the Lord grants us the grace to be able to start speaking his word over our lives, over our situations. Let us not just say we have faith and have this mental picture, but let us begin to make declarations consistent with the word of God. Be blessed and I look forward to sharing with you tomorrow. Amen.